this um, bill is proposing to switch to Atlantic time zone and opt out of daylight savings time. Um, some other states have tried to go to daylight savings time all year round, like Florida and California, but it would take an act of Congress for that to be allowed. And so switching time zones and opting out of daylight savings time would essentially have that same effect without needing an act of Congress, which may not come very soon. But the benefits have been demonstrated of doing so. So moving uh, sooner rather than later is preferred. Um, in 2017, uh, Massachusetts did a, a special commission on the Commonwealth's time zone. I gave an entire copy of that report to the chair and gave you all uh, the executive summary um, of what they found in that commission. Um, they found increases in economic growth, productivity, decreases in on-the-job injuries, and reduced severity of on-the-job injuries, um, reduced traffic fatalities, heart attacks, energy costs, and greenhouse emissions. Um, the concerns that they had with switching was if one state did it, they would be the traffic and and interstate commerce between those states would be a problem, and so they recommended um, going as a group of states. So this proposal will will move New Hampshire to Atlantic time zone when Massachusetts and Maine also agree to, to make that move. So we wouldn't be doing it independently. We're taking that recommendation to move as a group. Um, so, uh, so there have been lots of demonstrated issues with, with um, the lack of sleep or sleep deprivation or um, seasonal affective disorder. Um, those happen all over the country when we switch from daylight savings time and back and forth. But New Hampshire has an additional, and, and our region has an additional issue because we essentially go into um, an evening commute, which is in the dark, which other states, like um, even in, in, the, in the eastern time zone, like Florida and stuff like that, when they fall back in November, or they are still falling back at a time that is 5.30 um, sunset. And so they are still having that commute during the day, in daylight which um, some of the um, studies which I gave to, to the chairman show that, that uh, the daylight commute increase, um, reduces the amount of uh, accidents with animals because they're more active at night um, and it's harder to see them, also with pedestrians, et cetera, et cetera. And so, um, there is significant benefits to wildlife, to, to um, reduce car accidents, to a great number of things. Um, one of the, the issues that was suggested and, and drawbacks could be if school time still started very early in the morning and um, before the sun rose. And so the commission found that they would recommend that schools have a start time of no later than 8.30 in the morning. And there are um, s studies that show that, that having later start times is more effective for children anyways. So that I would definitely recommend, but I, wouldn't, I did not put that in the bill as a requirement that schools start at a specific time. I just think that it would be um, something that the that couldn't be expressed to to uh, superintendents and districts, and and that they can make their the choice that's best for them in their situation based on their schooling district. Um, this is really a bipartisan issue. Um, Massachusetts uh, 
has a bill in this year, which is which is um, proposed by a Democratic senator. Um, I believe that the representative from uh, Connecticut gave you testimony regarding this. He uh, is a Republican, and so it's it's really the benefits are are really shown and and people just want to move um, because of this of seeing those benefits so um, I definitely think that we should um, indicate that we would like to join Massachusetts and Maine in this endeavor and um, and I ex would be happy to answer any questions just one Quick, for the record, I received an email yesterday from Senator Hennessy, uh, Representative Goley, of writing to explain that I was inadvertently listed by OLS and co-sponsor of House Bill 567, which you will be hearing. It was too late for them to remove my name when I learned that I was listed as a co-sponsor. I am not taking a position on this bill, but I do want you to know that I had no intention of being listed as a co-sponsor. So just for the record that was received, and I know OLS has had problems with sponsors on bills because I know I've been dropped on a few and other people have as well. So that's just for the record, and questions? And I'd like to thank my friend for, for taking the questions that we're going to about to throw on you. So, as you mentioned, Massachusetts and Connecticut, I, I did a little research, um, and it appears that other New England states have legislation that's filed similar to this in the sense of if this state does this and this state does that, we're going to do this, right. as it does say in, in this legislation, if right. it was in Massachusetts and Maine agree, Absolutely. then New Hampshire will follow suit. But it seems like with all the New England states all using similar language, would it be, and I don't even know, I don't even know how you could go down this road, but it, would it make sense to you to for it seems like the six New England states have to have a get together and, and have a commission not just New Hampshire have one and to, so look at this and Maine to look at the you see what I'm getting at would, um, would it make more sense that the six New England states get together and come up with something unilaterally um, I'm not sure that another commission would be advised as I stated in my written testimony because the commission was is just there to find out the information and and research on the studies and you, you can uh, get a copy of it and look at all of the footnotes there the research isn't going to change it's just whether or not a specific state wants to be in or out of that um, and and most of the these proposals are based on who they have most economic and trade ties with. So, so um, Connecticut doesn't include New Hampshire in theirs, and Massachusetts, Massachusetts does. And um, so um, a lot of what I've heard is that a lot, a lot of people have economic ties with Massachusetts. So they seem to all just require that Massachusetts make the move. If, if Massachusetts makes the move, then other, other states will follow, including states like um, Vermont. Massachusetts' proposal this year does not include Vermont. But I would find it very unlikely that if Massachusetts moved, that Vermont wouldn't consider doing the same, even though I don't think that they've ever proposed um, moving to Atlantic time zone. But, uh, and so I think that having a commission to decide, even if all, all of the, let's say, all of the states except for Massachusetts decided that they didn't want to, Massachusetts decides that they want to, I think that that will change the, the um, cost-benefit analysis of not being on that, um, especially since all of our TV stations, a lot of the TV stations come out of there, and they will be um, advertising, hey, we're not changing our times time clock back and that might be confusing to other people in this area and so I think that <clears throat> as long as we stick with the contingency that Maine 
that w when main moves, we move, uh, that that uh, it will be beneficial. I don't think that we need to necessarily um, agree that that Vermont does it if we're doing it kind of a thing. Um, because we have such strong ties with Massachusetts. Sure. So. So, so then, with the way that this is, with the way that this is written, as it as it ties the decision making of the state of New Hampshire to decision making, in essence, of Maine and Massachusetts. Right. Um, with what you're saying here is that, in a, if I'm getting you right, that Massachusetts is holding all the cards here, in essence, because everybody seems to be tied to the decision of Massachusetts to go to the Atlantic Time Zone or not. And then the dominoes seem to fall after? Yes. OK. And so, so um, the proposal for, from Massachusetts this year does include New Hampshire and Maine and Rhode Island. And so they did not include Connecticut or Vermont. And so um, we wouldn't necessarily want to be left behind. Um, and and it, I think that with the evidence of the commission's um, report, <coughs> I think that it's it's clear that we could indicate yes we've seen the the evidence and we agree with your your findings on this. 